Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary and this is a Sweet Stuff Saturday. We got three new things on the table and I want to talk to you about them with my buddy Ethan, aka the Gear Gremlin. Sound good? Mm-hmm. All right. So, Ethan, what do we have on the table? So we have Dad's um, new knife, pen, and new, some new ink. All right. So... We... Which one are you going to take first? I'm going to take out the pen because I haven't seen this. Okay. So... As has been detailed on this very YouTube channel, while playing basketball, the Lamy 2000 popped out of my top pocket, hit the ground, and what happened? Split in half. The bead shot up into the back, like the nib that, as you know... Got destroyed. Totally destroyed. Destroyed. And it was a custom nib, so... Yeah, we were a little bummed. All right, so... This is actually the Twisby Eco, which is a relatively inexpensive fountain pen. This one has what's called a demonstrator body, which means you can see through it so you can see all the cool guts. This is also a vacuum, and that means that it's going to, once you, you're going to push this plunger down, and then you're going to suck it up, and as it sucks it up, it'll suck up the ink. And it makes Th pressure, and then it... Yeah, well, kind of, a little bit. So, this ink is... Uh, an ink from Pilot of Japan, and it is called Eroshizuku Kampeki. It is phenomenal. It is my favorite ink. It is really a vibrant, sharp blue. It it has a little bit of green to it, just a smidge, not a ton. You can't see it in the bottle, but when you write with it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stick the nib in, and we're going to put the feed in, or the little, the breathe hole, and it will suck up the ink. Ready? Watch, you can watch it do it. So I'm going to push all the air out by pushing the plunger down. It's cool. Yeah, I, ready? I watch. haven't seen this. Watch, so. watch, ready, 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 ready. Oh, there we go. Let's push it down one more time, because when you first fill it, you got to get all that air out of there. Okay, now one more time. And we're going to get a ton, an absolute ton of ink. Oh, look at that. That's so much ink. All right, now we got to wipe off the section where you put your fingers and nib so that it's not too messy. And uh, there you go. And the Twisby Eco in white has been filled up and it's ready to go. Lou, you want to talk about, well, first of all, did you like that? That was amazing. I actually really like that. And because it's not like a gazillion dollars, like every fountain pen you've ever seen. Yeah, this one's um, like twenty-eight to thirty-four dollars. So Super it's like cheap. Amazing. And would you? Uh, I've never seen you write with it, and I haven't worn with it yet. But how do you think it was? Well, I actually I was just getting ready to say that I've had an Echo Twisby, a Twisby Echo before. Twisbees have really good nibs. They write really well. They have huge ink capacities, but they do not hold together well. I've owned two Twisbees, and they both basically fell apart. So you're kind of buying like an almost disposable pen. I had a 580 that lasted less than a year. And then my last Eco, which is still up on my desk, but kind of leaks ink on random occasions and in random places, that one's probably, I got it right when the Eco came out. So four years ago, five years ago, I'm not exactly sure. This one I got in case we couldn't fix the Lamy 2000, which we did. And it has a 1.1 meter, a 1.1 millimeter stub nib. Do you know what a nib is? Do you yes. know what part is the nib? Point the nib to it. The nib is right there. It's that little silver part. And as you can believe it, there are only 10 custom nib makers in the entire United States. And mm -hmm. I think only like 15 in the world. No, there's more in the world. There's not a lot in the United States. I don't think it's 10 anymore. I went and checked. It's a little higher than that. But the one guy that I had do the nib for the, the uh, Lamy 2000, uh, he was the nib smith and he did a wonderful job. But this 1.1 millimeter stub nib, Having used the other Eco, it is really good. It's not quite as good as the custom nib, but it's really, really good, especially for the money. You're sort of making a trade-off. You're like, okay, I'm going to let this whole pen fall apart in five years, 
but the five years that you get to use it, it, it writes like a pen that's like 10 times the price. So that's the trade-off you get with the Twisby. And like I said, you get this huge ink reservoir. So that guy is loaded and ready to go. And I think it would be really cool if you like regularly used a fountain pen, you could get really neat handwriting. I wanna get neat handwriting because my handwriting is a little wah wah. Little wah wah wah. All right, yeah. what was the other thing that we got in for this week? We got this beautiful pocket knife. All right, do you know what? Do you know who made this? No, big guy design? No. You don't like big guy designs. Uh, I don't, it's not that I don't like it. I just didn't like their knife. Their knife was a little uh, ugly. So this knife is the Indiana Knives EDZ. The guy that runs Indiana Knives, Eric, his initials are EDZ. So as a sort of play on words, he made this knife. It's actually designed by Eric and produced by Best Tech. Uh, the steel on this knife, are you ready for this? What? what? Do you see that? Can you see that in the camera yet? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? This is a self-published blade with magna cut steel yeah ethan's uh jaw just dropped this is the first i believe self-published blade with magna cut steel it has a really nice uh so, sort of modified worn cliff it's not a, a true worn cliff like let's let's show them ethan's favorite knife in my collection look at that thing that thing is basically dead straight this is, of course, the Spyderco Air designed by Gail Bradley. My one, favorite knife. One of my very favorite knives in the world. I love this knife. It cuts like a demon. It weighs just over one ounce. Oh, and it's beautiful. This is basically what happens if Almar knives and Spyderco knives had a baby. But this is a little bit more of a curve. You can see it there. Um, blade stock is nice and thin. In fact, look at this. Are you ready for this? You're going to be shocked by this, Ethan Joseph. Look how thin the blade stock is. The blade stock on the Eco, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the EDZ and the blade stock on the Air. Now, the Air is a little thinner and it does taper more dramatically, but the blade stock is not that much different. And that strikes me as really awesome because when you have thin blade stock and super hard steel like Magna Cut, and you have a tall blade, like this is a pretty tall blade you can see compared to the, the Air, which just happened to be in my pocket. Uh, very, very tall blade. The EDZ gets, gets ultra thin way down here. It's a full flat grind and it's relatively tall blade and the stock is super thin. So right behind the edge, this thing is almost paper thin. And we're gonna see how it works. There's a couple other things I wanna point out while we're going through the knife. What do you think of the clip? Mm, not really. You don't like it? No. I know you don't like these sculpted clips. You like the stamped clips better. The, the spiral coat clip and- uh, The wire if clip? You, if you don't agree with this, I'm sorry, but the wire clip, spider coat clip, amazing, best clip. So yes, this is very similar to the clip on my custom Gareth Bull Shimori 2.0, the small Shimori. Um, it is a deep carry over the top sculpted titanium pocket clip. And as you can see, it is a blind clip. They have the, um, the little uh, fill tab here on the other side, but I am guessing that when you take the fill tab out, the screw goes all the way through. So it's a blind clip on the on the show side, on the clip side. Um, the knife comes on bearings and it is a button lock, as you can see. It also has this space up here where you can see just a, just a, a small sliver of the tang of the blade. And you can use that to open the knife. You can also spidey flick the knife open. You can, of course, drop open it because it's a button lock. But I'm pretty impressed. This knife was $235. They have a higher end version that runs Vanex steel, which I don't know why you would choose Vanex over, over Magna Cut. Magna Cut is the best steel on the market right now. Um, and so you can get this knife relatively inexpensively over at Indiana Knives. A couple other things that I think are really super cool about this knife. Look at how it has like this nice taper here. It gives you such a great handle on the knife. 
I'm not a huge fan of Warren Cliffs. I would have loved to see this blade just come up just that ever. Like if it was moved up like a quarter of an inch, it would give you a legit belly. I think there might be some concerns with the blade's tip showing if it moved up a quarter of an inch. But overall, I am really impressed with this knife. I can't wait to put it through its paces. I think we need to have a pocket knife lunch or two with this guy, don't you think? Yeah, but Spyderco will always win. Ah. Uh, I like Spyderco too. But we got to keep an open mind. No, but Spyderco is better than all that leaves. Uh, the flipping action on this guy is outstanding. I mean, just super good. These modern button locks are so good. The detent is really impressive. You would not think that you could get a good detent on a button lock, but like you got real, you got real force to overcome there. So that's the EDZ from Indiana Knives, the uh, Pilot Iroshizuku Kompeki, and the Twisby Eco. That's all the stuff we got in that, that we carry or used to carry EDC stuff. Um, what do you think we should do for next video, next week's video? Um, I think we should do um, a cutting test with all of your knives and see, because I've been seeing some fluctuate, like the, the reigning champ has gone past. What do you think the reigning champ is? Is it the neutron? Yeah, it's the neutron. Yeah, it's neutron. the neutron. All right. Well, let's, I think that we should do a cutting test next week too. And we'll put in the EDZ. We'll put in... Um, the air. The air is super great. But yeah, we could put in the air. We'll put in a couple of things. We should get some stuff to cut. I think we should cut some rubber tubing. I have rubber tubing. I think we should cut some sisal rope. Sisal rope. Or twine. No, no. And I think we should cut I don't want some. To ruin any of your knives, but this will look really dangerous. We'll be good. So, so I think we should go the tubing, the rope, some cardboard, and some really sticky, like. Uh... Not sticky. That no, no, it's got to be really sticky. I want it to be like some sharp cheddar, some sticky sharp cheddar. That, that I think covers all your bases. Maybe we could throw in some wood there if we wanted to do, have people do some uh, fire prep tasks. All right. Well, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Take Bye. It.